the Techno Bear. Big day today, I'm going to be releasing ORAC 2.0. Initially as a public beta so that you can give me some feedback and help me to get it ready for release. So for those who don't know what ORAC is, um, ORAC is a open source virtual modular um, that's designed for small computers, things like the Organelle, the Raspberry Pi, etc. The goals of 2.0 are quite simple. The first is to make it available to more people. Second thing is to make it easier to use. And then finally, to be more flexible. So let's talk about some of these. To make it available to more people, it's now going to be available multi-platform. It's going to be available on the Organelle, it's going to be available on the Raspberry Pi, and it's going to be available on a couple of Eurorack modules. Now, this video is going to concentrate mainly um, on the other features. I'm going to do separate videos on the Raspberry Pi and Eurorack, but these features that we're going to show are all relevant to those as well. Now, a key aspect of ORAC for me is that it's a standalone instrument. The idea is that with the Organelle is you can just go on the road and you can just play it. You don't need your phone or anything else to use it. That is crucial. I want to keep that same element for the Raspberry Pi and for the Eurorack. Now, that means that basically they're going to be controllable from your MIDI keyboard. Now we have already have some elements of this already. They can already be driven by an external keyboard and we already have MIDI Learn. But I needed to introduce a new thing to allow you to be able to initially configure uh, the rack. And that is called remote control. Now this is done via OSC. So actually you can build your own remote control apps. But the idea is very simple. What you're gonna do is Initially, you're going to configure your, your uh, ORAC via your phone, your computer, or via a push to. You'll be able to set up all the controls and parameters as you want it, and then you'll be able to save it as a preset. Then what you can do is when you want to use it standalone, you can then control it directly from your keyboard. You can switch presets by using program change messages, etc. So you don't need your phone at that point. Of course, if you want to carry on using it to tweak, you can do it, that's fine. Uh, it's using OSC in a very simple way. So this means that um, initially I'm going to be releasing a Lima patch for the iPhone um, or iPad. Um, and I'm also going to be releasing a pure data patch, which can then run on your computer, for example. But the idea is that if you actually take these apart, you can then move these to touch OSC or, or whatever your favorite um, environment is. So I hope that more in the community will be able to share new versions of it. So those we're gonna see a little bit of in a minute. Um, and we're gonna talk about some of the other things like CV control in other videos. So let's talk about some of the other features. The first thing that's very changeable is the router. That's now much easier to use, and it's also easier for you to develop your own routers. Uh, we'll see this later. Presets are now stored as separate files, which means that you can now share them with other people, and also you can move them across devices. So if I could develop a preset on my Organelle, and then I could use it, move it to my Eurorack module, or my uh, Raspberry Pi. Also, I've made it easier for uh, third-party modules to be shared because they're now going to be in their own new subdirectory so that if I release a new version of ORAC they won't be overwritten. The next big thing is modulation. Um, this is a, in a couple of different forms. So in its simplest form you have now modulation module so we can create an LFO that will modulate one of the parameters but also in things like Eurorack you'll be able to modulate via CV. That's done in a similar way to actually the way that MIDI Learn has been currently done, which you still obviously have. The second thing I wanted to do was to get into sample management. Um, previously, all of the modules had their own little sample bags. Now that's gone. All of the modules now actually use sample kits. So we have 
a number of sample kits, and each of those had slots in them. Now, the advantage of that means that, for example, I can do things like record a sample in Overloop, and then I can load that up into the sampler module and use it. It also means that, yeah, if you build your own little kits of samples, you can obviously then use them across all of the modules rather than just one particular one. So management becomes a lot easier. I've also introduced MPE support. So if you've got a rolling seaboard, continuum, sound, plane, eigen, harp, you'll now be able to get MPE support within ORAC. Then for the organelle, I've added graphics support. Now this is currently only on the organelle, but we've seen quite a lot of new patches on the organelle which use the screen really nicely, and I didn't want ORAC to actually be left out of that. So those are the main changes, and now we're going to have a bit of a look at each of those in turn. ORAC on the remote control on the iPhone. I apologise for not having very good pictures of this. I don't really have a setup to do this properly. Uh, this is actually controlling uh, a Eurorack module. Um, but again, it's, it's available on the Organelle and Raspberry Pi as well. Again, the key thing here is allowing you to be able to control everything if you don't have a screen and keyboard available. Um, so this is using Lima. Um, it's very similar to the way that the organelle is set up. So basically this is like the main page and we can come through here. We can go through the various settings here. Um, we can do things like select a new module. Um, and then we've got actually the parameters on a separate page here, which we can obviously just select here. Uh, it's very, very simple to use. Uh, we can change pages as well. Uh, I don't think Punchy's actually got a separate page, but yeah, okay, it's not got a separate page. But um, and we can switch modules up here as well. Again, yeah, there we go, that's got a different page. Uh, very simple to use. Um, you, uh, if you want to do things like um, parameter learning and module learning, you simply use the med menu here. So basically, you click on MIDI Learn. Uh, to enable it and then basically twiddle your um, your MIDI controller so that it knows which CC and then come to one of the parameters here and twiddle one of those and that's how you do MIDI learn. Uh, similarly if you want to do um, modulation learn you can do the same thing you just click on here and we also can obviously do things like come into here and load templates etc. So you have the same features as you've got on the organelle push or on the push data. Okay, so this is a demonstration of controlling ORAC from your computer. This, this is the pure data patch, which is very simple. You can actually edit this and change it to your liking a little bit. Um, this is actually controlling a Raspberry Pi at the moment. Um, the patch is simple to use. Um, you can actually see it's very similar to the organelle, actually. We have the what's the organelle screen down here, really, the menu. And then we've got its parameters. At the top, we've got the uh, module that's currently selected. And down here, we've got the page. Uh, we can actually easily move through the various modules by just using the arrow buttons, left and right. We can um, go to different pages on a particular module by using the page up and down button. Uh, which you can see here um, and then the main thing is obviously you need to do things like change modules so this actually uses down here the little menu here you can use it on the screen so we can click on things up here as well but um, we can do it then just use the keyboard press enter and change to a different, uh, use a different sampler for example um, and uh, as I say if you've got a touch screen you can also just do it with touch you can obviously come here or you could do it with the mouse but the idea as well that you can actually just come through up to here and just do it with the touch screen as well. Um, as I say, though, this is also about being able to just edit it. And then you could, for example, see the OSC messages and then create your own Max for Live patch. Or if you want to do a, a portable example on your, say, your Android phone, then you could use um, any uh, OSC enabled app for that. And you could use this as the basis to get you started. Okay, so this is the push two. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a push two, you can control ORAC with it. This is actually controlling an organelle. 
Um, very easy to do. I've improved it a lot since the previous version. So we can select modules down at the bottom here. We can select pages up here. Uh, we can change new device, the devices in a particular slot with the device button here. Um, we can also um, do things like automation. So that's modulation bus by using the automate button. And we can do MIDI learn by using the setup button. Um, we can also do all the other features. So for example, if we press browse, this allows us to actually load and save uh, new presets and the save settings allows you to save the state of the rack which is things like what the um, the preset is that's actually used on startup so you've got full control of all right uh, from here uh, obviously also with the push 2 it has the advantage that obviously it has a keyboard as such so you can actually play or act directly from it as well and so this is really handy on something like a raspberry pi okay so now we're going to switch back to the organelle to actually have a look at the functional changes um, now these are all applicable to the other platforms as well but i thought i'd show it on the organelle as that's so that the organelle users don't feel left out um, obviously again the Organelle users can also use all the remote interfaces and stuff as well. Okay, so let's start with the router. So I've massively simplified the router. Uh, before you had a problem that you didn't quite know where the beginning and the end of the chains were. So now what I've done is by default, I've actually created just two routers, the so-called serial router and a parallel router, which is of three chains. Don't worry, you're going to see that this is much more flexible than that first might sound. But also, I've made the routers much easier to actually build yourself. And I'll actually just show a little picture here of what the two routers look like, and you'll see how simple they actually are. Okay, so how does that actually work? So what I've done is I've now given the keys some kind of meaning. Um, and we're actually in the router module here. So these... The white keys are now the so kind of like audio slots, if you wish. These can contain anything and the audio passes between them. And they're set up as three trains. These three keys are set up as being chain A. These are set up as chain B. And these are set up under chain C. So these, you can easily identify where the beginning of the chain is because it's either on the C or it's on the F. I mean, it's easy. So next, we've got the black keys, and the black keys I've given some special usage. So these first two keys here are the so-called system keys, and these are used usually for the router and the clock. The next three lots are used for modulation slots. Now, you can put modulators also in the primary ones, and if you want to pass their modulations through the bus through here, you will put them here. But if you're doing modulation learn, then you can put them in these slots. And then the final two are the pre and post slot. So these are basically used for uh, audio. And the first one precedes all of the chains. And the second one is post all of the chains. So you've got a nice easy place, for example, to put reverb on everything. You just select this one. Now, I also wanted to make it on the organelle a bit easier to actually do things like um, control volumes, etc. So the serial one now has a keyboard control. So if we actually select, press a key, we get the module. And this selects the router controls for that particular module. So we can obviously just, if we want to change the gain on B, we just press this key here, and then we can literally just click the B. Very simple. Also, there is now a concept of through gain so that uh, the modules now don't pass the, the audio through automatically. Usually they won't. So what we can now actually do is to turn up or down the, the gain of the audio. We can also completely bypass the module very simply by just turning bypass on and off. Um, you can obviously still select pages as with any module like this. And obviously we also then have uh, chain controls, which are tend to be up here as well. And then the last couple are quite interesting, the so-called main controls. 
these have some a couple of new features the first feature is the destination this controls where the keyboard actually goes to so normally in Doric one the keyboard would always go to the active module and that's the default destination zero but you can actually select here any of the audio modules here down here to select instead so you can actually make it for example always go to the head of chain one by selecting destination zero okay the second part is uh, to do with MIDI I've completely changed the MIDI interaction with the way that the organelle works now um, and this is important for also the Raspberry Pi this says on what MIDI channel will this active keyboard be so basically if we have it on MIDI channel one then what will happen is that any remote uh, keyboard that I plug in will actually take over this control we can then also decide whether or not we want the active keyboard to be sending notes or controls. We can turn that on and off if we wish. And then on the second page here, uh, we can decide whether or not we're willing to take program control messages uh, to select presets. Uh, we can then also set a couple of CCs. Again, this is useful for a remote keyboard. So which CC is the AUX key and which CC represents the uh, sustain pedal and the expression pedal. These are kind of common defaults, so they're, they're useful for mostly. So that's the router module. Okay, let's go to a normal module. And I want to show you something. The first thing is that you may remember in the past when you wanted to select a module, you basically had a full list. Now we actually have a nice little page system. So we'll select the active module and then they're grouped. So FX, modulators, routers, sequences, etc. So it's now much easier to actually select the ones you want. Um, and it remembers where you are. So if you come in here, I can then quite quickly come back and select a different uh, sequencer, for example. The next thing I want to show you is presets. So presets are a bit different. Um, so now when you used to come here before and you used to change a preset, you had this thing where you would update a preset and then you'd have to go back to the main menu to change it. That's all gone now. Presets are now, when you pre press save, it saves it immediately to its own separate file. So what you'll find is that if I do new preset here, okay, there now is a new file called uh, basically a new folder called new dash one if you rename that folder that will now be the name of that preset so it's much easier these are also kept in a special data folder so that if you reinstall or or whatever then your presets are not lost so now if we come back to here so what's this save used for well now that save option is saving the rack settings and what the rack settings are are um, basically at the moment the default patch that's loaded so if i now for example save this now it would actually load new dash one every time ORAC was started so you can choose which one you want to have going okay next part modulation this is probably a favorite for many people i think um, so modulation simply i'm going to do it in a modulation slot so I just select one of these slots and I'm going to select currently I have only a couple of modulations I'm still getting used to the UI by the way <laughs> okay the most obvious one is an LFO um, you can change the shape the rate uh, the amount and the offset so basically what this does is uh, you can basically say it's high or low it's nothing very simple now the important part is on the second page is this so-called modulation bus so modulation buses need a bit of explanation the idea is that this modulator will be modulating on bus 10 now you will put other modulators on different buses so you can just change this to 11 or whatever now the modulation buses below 10 have a special meaning particularly 
uh, one, two, three, and four. These are actually used as control inputs through these primary modules. So you'd put the modulator, say, at the beginning of the chain. And modulation bus zero represents pitch bend. Modulation bus one represents the modulation wheel. Modulation bus two represents CC74, which is MP, MPE. So those are going actually into the um, particular modules here. Whereas above 10, we use these with modulation learn. So let's have a look at how we might do that. Now, the way you do modulation learn is exactly the same as MIDI learn. So if we go back here, we can see that we've got a rate of zero. If I want to modulate something, what I basically do is I come through here. I'll just turn up the rate so that I've got some modulation messages going through. I then can come in here and I can turn on modulation learn. Switch to a module. So for example, here I want to modulate the timber and you'll see it's it's already done it. It's learned the fact because it's seen a modulation signal going. It says, OK, I'm going to learn that control. And we can actually learn multiple controls as well. So now we have two different ones that are being done. And that can obviously be across modulation. So, so there's another modulation feature here, which is that it's just a macro control. So we can basically actually assign just these four knobs to other modules. So that's quite useful, obviously, if you want to have like performance control um, all in one place. And we could obviously have three of these, so we could quite quickly switch between them. Um, and again, you see the same thing, amount and offset on here. This is also the way that CCs also work. Okay, so now I want to show you the next part, which is sample management. Now, this is actually very easy to use. Um, essentially, I've got in here, I've got this, the sampler module. If I come here, this is sampler 24. Now, the exact controls might vary a little bit, but what you'll generally find is that there's now a new page. So this is like got different slots for the samples. And you can see what you've got here is that you can actually select a kit here. Now, for sampler 24, I've made it simple such that you always select the different samples from um, the one kit. Um, so here we just select the kit that we want. Um, and then for each sample, I can now actually select the relevant sample. It's as simple as this. Now, the key thing though is here, is that if we change modules, so we change to something like Overloop, which is actually an FX now, I think. If I, there it is. We have the same thing. So in Overloop, what it is, is that, as you may remember, that you keep on recording and it goes up the keys. Now, what happens here is you select the kit that you want to record into. So what I can do here is I can actually record into a particular WAV file into kit three. Um, and now I can actually come to the sampler and I can actually use that same uh, sample. It's as simple as that. Um, and that's the point. All of the samplers are now using, so if I go to Nori sampler, are using this. So now I could just come into here, select kit three, and now I would be using the sample that I just recorded on Overloop. I'm not gonna show you MPE. Um, MPE just, well, basically kind of works. Um, all you need to do is to go into um, your router and um, select the chain inputs here uh, and make sure that on the MIDI settings, sorry, chain settings, and on the MIDI settings, make sure that you will turn on MIDI um, and then obviously channel zero equals all channels. And then it's gonna automatically use them. Now let's uh, have a look at an organelle specific thing, which is graphics. So I've not implemented it on many modules, but Let's do one. Let's uh, look at polybeats, which I find quite useful. So if we come into here, select sequence uh, polybeats. Now what we can find is that 
obviously I've still got the usual controls here, but if I do another page, I can now see the keyboard so I can see what is latched on and off. Now, the key thing about the way that I've done the graphics side is that when we're building modules, they're going to be integrated together. Um, so what's gonna happen is they will actually feed the parameters so you could have actually specific controls on the keyboard page here. Um, and those will then automatically be able to be fed onto the underlying parameters. That's important so that when people do things like preset saving, they actually get the, the right values when they recall it. Um, another module needs a, a synthesizer on it. I'll put a synth on here. Uh, let's just put monopoly, doesn't matter. Uh, let's get some notes going here. And then why not have a little scope? So you can now see what's going on based on it. Now I've implemented this so that it's efficient, so that these graphics are obviously only really computed and displayed when the uh, module's selected. So if I actually come here, then that scope is not actually providing any real CPU usage. Uh, if I increase the, I might see a bit more action. If I let's do some more. Oh. Let's let, let's let the divisions actually we'll probably do. so this is where it actually becomes quite nice the the modular aspect of aurac so that basically what we can now do is we can create graphics modules um, that are either just graphic sequences or graphic um, uh, synthesizers but then we can have generic things like scopes and things if we want to use those as well okay so that was what i wanted to show um, apologies it's a, a very long video and b uh, no music it's just not feasible really for the amount of stuff that i had to get through um, there's still lots of other things that i've i've not even mentioned really um, i say i will be doing a video that shows uh aurac on the raspberry pi and also on the euro rack modules as well um, so that'll show you things like how to set it up, etc. Um, there's also just other stuff that I've just not talked about. For example, Overloop has had some changes so that it can loop around uh, the various recordings. Uh, there's now a MIDI out module, which means that uh, the ORAC can act as if it was an external keyboard to something. Um, there's CV outputs. Um, all sorts of different things. Um, there's also um, a way that's been changed for the audio to be processed. So I now have what's called split stereo handling. Now what that means is rather than just a simple pan left and right, you can say exactly how much of each channel is sent down. So what this means in practice is, for example, I want to be able to send the right audio input channel down into chain number two and I want the left channel to go to chain three. Now the key thing is that all of the modules are stereo so what you can actually do is to send down the right channel down to chain two but the modules will then see it as centered or off centered or whatever you want to and then at the bottom of the chain you have also split stereo handling, which means that you can say for each of those chains how much of the left and the right you wish to be placed on the left and right channels for summing. Um, that just makes it much more flexible. Um, there are also obviously bug fixes, etc. Um, there's a lot of changes. Um, I hope you've got through to the end of it. Um, as I said right at the beginning, um, it's going to be a beta program. I really do need your feedback, um, not only if you find bugs, but also because I actually you'll see the way that the things have changed. I want to get feedback on that uh, and see if there's any possible room for improvements um, in certain areas. I mean, obviously, this has taken a long time, so. I only have a certain amount of time. I'm just a, an individual developer doing it in my spare time. Um, so obviously 
we have to be careful with the enhancements. I don't have time to do masses of things. Okay, and that's really it for today. Thank you very much. <laughs>